Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is part four of a video series on frequency distribution in histograms. Again, thank you to Ms. Borlaug for allowing us to use her PowerPoints for this video series. And remember our goals for this video series. We have already done one example where we're given raw data and constructed a frequency distribution, relative frequency distribution, percent frequency distribution, and histogram. Um, and given a frequency distribution, find the lower class limits, upper class limits, and the class width. Let's look at another example of that. And this time our data set will have one decimal place. We're looking at the weight of 25 dogs. We have the list of the data points. Notice that all the data is rounded to one place after the decimal. You may want to pause here to take time to copy and create the table that we have. Or you may want to look to see if the PDF file is posted or that you have it in your notes. Notice that the data is rounded to one places and the classes also have one decimal place. The number of decimal places used in the classes must match the decimal places in the data. Notice since the raw data is rounded to the nearest one place one decimal place, not the one whole number, but one decimal place, there is a 0 0.1 gap between the classes. Again, look at the gap between the beginning of class 2 and the end of class 1. There's a tenth or 0 0.1 gap between those between 33.5 and 33.4 you add 0.1 to get between those. Between 40.9 and 41.0 is a 0.1 gap. A 0.1 gap between 48.5 and 48.4 between 56.0 and 55.9 there's a 0.1 gap. Between 63.5 and 63.4 there is a 0.1 gap. And between 71.0 and 70.9 there's a 0.1 gap. Since the raw data is rounded to the to, is rounded to the nearest one decimal place, there is a 0.1 gap between the classes. That way, none of the data can fall in between two classes. We can now tally the data. If you haven't watched the previous previous video on tallying and need help in doing so, that video gives hints on how to tally. But I'm just going to go to da the magic of PowerPoints and videos. So we've tallied the data and now we just simply cha change those tallies to numbers. Of the data, there is one of those data that falls between 26 and 33.4 two that fall between 33.5 and 40.9, six in the next class, ten in the following, then three, then two, and finally one. And we've got our frequency done. Next we are ready to fill in the relative frequency the same way we did in the previous table. Uh, excuse me, in the previous video, not in the previous table. Note that we have a total of 25 data items in our set. The first class has a frequency of 1, which will give us 1 over 25 or 0 0.04. The next class 
has 2, so that will be 2 over 25, which is equal to 0 0.08. 6 over 25 gives us 0 0.24. 10 over 25 gives us 0 0.40. 3 over 25 gives us 0 0.12. 2 over 25 gives us 0 0.08. And 1 over 25 gives us 0 0.04. And in this case, we didn't have to worry about rounding because they all came out evenly. But if you need to worry about rounding, please ask your teacher for her, specific, her or his specific rules. And that finishes out our relative frequency. Next, we will want to look at the percent frequency. To get the percent frequency, we will change the 0 0.04 by moving our decimal over two places between the zeros to after the 4. That's moving it over one two places and that will give us 4%. Continue in that pattern moving the decimal two places from in front of the zero here between after this first zero in front of the second zero and that gives us moving it two places 8%. Moving it in front of the two to after the four gives us 24%. For 40.40 that changes it to 40% then 12%, then 8%, and then 4%. 0 0.04 becomes 4%, 0 0.08 became 8%, 0 0.12 becomes 12%, 0 0.40 became 40%. And that completes our table. We can now can also construct a histogram of the dog's weight in the same manner. If you would like to try this on your own, this would be a great place to stop and pause the video before I proceed to show you what to do and what the histogram would look like. Notice the horizontal axis with the weight in pounds of the classes along the bottom of the page, and again the frequency as the vertical axis. We could have stopped at 10, but Mrs. Borlaug used the same axis as before for convenience and in this PowerPoint, and it won't, it won't make a difference if, if we create and go up a little bit higher. We just have to go at least as high as 10. Next, we'll add the bars for each class. Classes on the bottom, frequency on the left. Now the bars. One for the first, two, then six, 10 for the next, lastly the 3, the 2, and lastly the 1. And we have created our histogram. As before, we can also list the lower class limits, which would be the numbers on to the left, which are the lower numbers of each class. That would be the 26, the 33.5, and then the 41.0, next the 48.5, then the 56.0, next the 63.5, and finally 71.0. For the upper class limits, sorry, got distracted by what I had written down to say and what I actually did say. Um, notice the way it's worded here. It just asks for the lower class limits, which will indicate that we want them all. Your teacher could ask what is the lower class limit of the third class or class three, and then you would just answer the third class, one, two, three, and the lower class limit then would be 41.0. The upper class limits indicate that we want all of them, all of the numbers that are on the right side because those are the upper or larger numbers in each class. 33.4 and 40.9 and 48.4 
and 55.9 and 63.4 and 70.9 and then lastly 78.4 and yes I read those a little strange but that was so the closed captioning <laughs> uh, gets that correct uh, and again your teacher might ask what's the upper class limit of class 2 and that would be 40.9 to find the class width we don't need to do it all but you could subtract an, uh, one lower class from the previous lower class. In this case, that would give us a distance of 7.5, and that would t tell us that the class width then is 7.5. And then just quickly, because I, we don't want to dwell on it, the summary of the information and the summary of the results is listed here. At this point, I have reached my 10 minute mark plus, so I need to make a conclusion and tell you thank you for watching and let you know that we will start the next video and that will be part 5 of this series.